So in order to try to revolutionize the world of video game podcasting, I decided to do a podcast about arcade games while me and Joel and some other people were playing the, uh, the new sit-down like cocktail arcade cabinet at our friend Elliot's bar. So uh, Joel's a little hard to hear at first because I was playing Galaga, so I couldn't uh, man the microphone properly, but it evens out after the first few minutes. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. You know what? I was just thinking how awesome it would be to do an episode of my video game podcast while actually playing a game. So yeah, I'm going to turn it on. Okay, cool. So what I was saying to Joel, me and Joel are playing at uh, our friend Elliot's bar, 1602 in Toronto. They got a, Yeah, they got an arcade machine. So we're playing two-player Galaga where it flips. It's like a table. So I died pretty fast. Joel's already doubled my score. It's just a play to see who gets more score. But I was saying how I, I'm really fascinated by this era of video gaming, like right around when I was born or a little before in the late 70s where like even though video games make more money now than ever before, it's still pretty niche, like a niche, niche thing. Where back then, like everybody knew this shit. Like I just heard uh, a thing on NPR the other day about Bioshock Infinite and the guy said, I mean NPR is fucking dumb and it's for idiots, but the guy was like, Oh, Bioshock Infinite, like, genre-spanning, you know, genre-redefining, super-intelligent game, racism and all this, and social stuff. This isn't Pong or Super Mario. I was like, fuck you, is that really the most... That, that's what you got? That's your reference? But that might be. Maybe that is all people know. <laughs> like, oh, Joel's wow. dead. 99, not bad, though. And I was thinking... Oh man, yeah, you just fucking murdered me. I got, I've got five thousand points, and Joel has twenty thousand. I don't think I'm gonna win this. Uh, this, this the thing go. About these games, though, is they're they're all hand-eye coordination, right? Like, yeah, it's super hardcore. Like when I was playing earlier, I went through fifty cents so fast. I played Arkanoid and uh, oh shit, what is the other game that I played? But games that I considered myself good at, and I just died in a second. But, but I totally remember these games from, uh, like, the Village Square Leisure Center back in Calgary. It was like, a, it was like one of them to swim. And they just, they had, like, this whole, this whole row of arcades. And these games, when I was a kid, were just sort of laughable. But they were also the cheapest games, right? So, right. Like, some were 25 cents for whatever, or some were 50 cents. But, like, Galaga? Could go wrong with Galaga. That's one thing, too, that's great about this. I mean, this has got to be just some kind of main box or something, but it's got a shit ton of games. Whereas back in the day, like, it would be awesome to see an arcade machine somewhere and, like, awesome. But then that was the game, and you just had to play Russian Attack or just whatever. Not that that game's bad, but whatever they had, that's what you were stuck with, and you just had to play it. No, did you play, play a lot of pinball? I never played a lot of pinball, no. I just I, I felt like even though pinball should have been more engaging because there is a lot more feedback, like physical feedback, I just couldn't get into it like a video game. Oh, I did beat Joel's score, but not by much. I'm at 2,500 and he's at 20,000. See, now, pinball was my game. Oh, Joel's dead already. Oh, Holy fuck. Do we have any men left or is that it? Uh, no, I, I got a few. Oh, okay, here I am again. Well, it's one thing that's weird too with these games is even like, like that it, uh, I can see how a, a very old generation just couldn't understand the abstraction of what's going on here. Because my friend Terry has always stuck with me. He tried to show his grandfather some video games. I was lucky, I should have died there. And, uh, you know, of this kind of era of like, you know, really basic stuff. But, but his grandfather was like, so you press the buttons and you move the little joystick and you just change what the lights on your TV are doing. And it was so reductive, wow. but he was wow. right. Like, that's all that's happening right now. I mean, you could argue that's all that happens with anything, like a movie or whatever. Oh, music, eh? You change the sound waves in the room. Who gives a shit? <laughs> but so th there, was, there was another style of video game. Is this, 
And I don't know if anybody remembers this, but there was a whole Vector. Yeah, Vector games were awesome. My friend Terry, again, he had a Vectrex. Did you ever see that? Oh, yeah, that shit was amazing. Yeah, they were awesome. It was like a little standalone, looked like a little arcade machine. And it was all Vector graphics, so you can't emulate it or anything. And I heard that the story of why they're so hard to find now, he got his at like a yard sale to somewhere, is that they, the, guy, the manufacturers that made that, they got a deal on old vector monitors from a hospital that went out of business. And then the Vectrex was really popular, but they couldn't get any more vector monitors at that low rate. Right. So they couldn't make any more. But yeah, like Asteroids is still my favorite old school yeah. arcade game, and to play it vector is way better than, no, no, the, than Sprite. The greatest vector game of all times is actually Star Wars. Oh, the, the, yeah, the Star Wars vector game, sure. And it had like clips from the movie and like. So it would be like, may the force be with you, and then and then you would you would do the trenches, but the trenches were so, you know, like at least my dumb brain as a kid were the most realistic thing ever, even though they were just made out of lines. You know, like it's it's hard to be flying through that Death Star trench. Oh fuck! Oh shit, man! I mean, this game is What's hardcore. This is so much harder than like uh, Space Invaders or whatever. Like just oh, the way these, them. the way these fucking things are flying right at you and Are like, you? like oh, sorry. I, I was keeping my steely composure there, but I came so close to dying like six times during that. Like that was crazy. Yeah. I think too now that I've gotten so obsessed with playing games on hard and being all hardcore about it. And so is that it now? Are we done? No, it's another man. Whoa. Like I should, I should play more old games. Like these things are. These are the tits. Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah, I was going to say earlier, though, wouldn't it be awesome if some guy, somebody was listening to that NPR story about Bioshock Infinite, and the guy's like, this isn't, uh, this isn't Pong or Super Mario, and the guy's like, what? There's another game? <laughs> There's a third video game? This isn't Pong, Super Mario, and Cabbage Patch Kids the game? Was there a Cabbage Patch Kids game? Because there should have been. There was a Barbie game that was such garbage, but I played it just because my friend's sister had it. Oh, shit. And it was really hard. One of the... Um, Whoa, fuck. One of the first games that I remember as a kid, and I... Fuck me in the ass. I feel like I might have brought this up on early episodes of uh, Bottom Countdown, but... Uh, so my dad is the cheapest human being on the planet. <laughs> right. And so our first personal computer was the ColecoVision Atom, or Coleco Atom rather. So it was like half a ColecoVision and half a computer. Right. That's kind of cool. That doesn't sound so bad. Uh, yeah, except it was totally garbage. <laughs> uh, but one of the games we had was called uh, BC Quest for Fire. <laughs> was it based on Johnny Hart's classic it strip? It was indeed. <laughs> So you were these dumb BC characters on a wheel, and you would just roll through stuff, and you would have to jump over like gaps in the road. Oh, oh no, I can't do this. That's the thing where he. Uh, oh, that's where he beams you up. And yeah, he beams fucked. you up, and then you get a double ship. But this is my last man, so I can't. I yeah. can't do that. I never thought either. People talk about that like it's a legit strategy to let yourself get taken, and then you have a double ship. It is if you have like forty men. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, but if you're playing with your basic three, it's not a good idea. So did the BC game have any religious allegories, or was that before he got into all that? Because uh, that shit got intolerable. You know what? If it did, true. it was lost, lost on me as a kid. All I knew is it was, uh, it was really hard, and the guy had a wheel, but at least they looked, well, they looked somewhat like the BC characters. Which was a huge deal in those days. <laughs> right, just for them to look. Because, yeah, I mean, even at, well, I was going to make fun of E.T. on the 2600, but, oh my god, I'm an idiot. I've been pounding this button. There's a rapid fire built into this. You just have to um, hold it down. And there was another game on the VIC-20 called Omega Race or something. Was it called Omega Race? Yeah. That doesn't ring a bell. I feel like it was a hybrid between Galaga and uh, you're Asteroids. Of, you were thinking of Gyrus. No, I'm thinking of Omega Race. Because we're talking like PC type oh, oh. Yeah. shit now, where you get into the really weird shit. Like, because there were a lot of early, early games that were... Do either of you two remember Flightmare? Flightmare? No, no. no. what was that on? Okay, never mind then. Was it an arcade game? 
No, it was a it was an old PC uh, shooting game of sorts. Oh, fuck. All right, I'm dead, but Joel, I'm cleaning you up now. I got 75,000 and you got 20, so I I was worried at the at the start, but I think I'm going to win. <laughs> okay, we'll see, we'll see. I was going to say it's another thing that was that's another thing that was weird about the uh, olden days of uh, this era of video gaming when it was more like a fad. Like Coleco is a perfect example. That Coleco meant the Connecticut Leather Company, but they're like, "Fuck it, let's just make video games. Why not?" Well, Coleco was like supposed to be the uh, Atari competitor, and I, you know, in my opinion. Oh shit! Do I have another man. Bad. Holy fuck! I rock this shit. You have like three men. Oh, you're right. Oh, okay. Well, here. Let me this no, that was it. That was my last man. <laughs> Player one game over. Do I get? Uh, Oh, my hit-miss ratio is only 27. Do I get to put in a high score is the question. Fourth place. That's pretty good. Better than nothing. Now, do I go K-A-M or do I go A-S-S? Of course you do A-S-S. Yeah, I, as soon as I said it, I knew it was a dumb... Oh, I pressed the wrong button. I'm A-A-A. That sucks. Yeah, no, I, I, I'd i like to... Uh, all these retro video games, it's, it's like... There was a certain point when I got into pinball, and I feel like... I feel like we we need to revisit pinball, and nobody has pinball anymore. Yeah, wasn't there a, like a pinball bar that just closed? There and... was, yes, the the pinball cafe. It was very nice. They did not have a proper business license for whatever the fuck they were doing, so you know, yeah. So they just got shut down, and yeah. they blamed the city. And you know, I wish that they did, were still around. The uh, Star Trek The Next Generation pinball is still the greatest pinball, in my opinion. Followed by Twilight Zone pinball, which is probably the the second greatest. And uh, Slash's Snake Pit. <laughs> oh, no, no, sorry. It was GNR pinball. Oh, yeah, Guns N' Roses pinball. Slash's Snake Pit was was a, uh, a separate game within that pinball. Nice. I really like the I really like the Guns N' Roses pinball game. I didn't. No, it was a really good pinball yeah, game. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Um, and I I feel like the Star Wars Episode One pinball game, which was probably it's okay. It was pretty late in the era, but it was it was actually pretty good. Yeah, that had to be one of the last ones, right? Because I thought yeah. I heard somewhere that Bally Midway was the last pinball producing. Yeah, we're done. It's fine. Um, was the last pinball company and they went out of business. I don't think they make pinball machines anymore. No. And it's too bad because, like, like uh, there's a lot of pinball emulators for, like, your iPad or whatever, but, like, fucking pinball, like, the actual thing is, is just so good. What I really think is a neat idea is that I would love to do, like, a figure out how to make a miniature pinball machine with ball bearings instead of like normal I think I, I think that's been done it, I'm sure it's been done but I want what I want is like real miniaturized oh so, so you want the same ones that you played well large scale, stuff of that quality down. right like yeah. at least stuff of that quality right I think I think it would be possible and I think it would be like terribly expensive but I think it would be a lot of fun you know, it's funny because, like, pinball machines to have in your house are not actually... I mean, they're, like, about a grand. I heard, yeah, like, restoring them can be a real bitch because it's so much, you know, physical stuff. Like, Yeah, but yeah. but at the same point, it's like... You know, I, I think I would save up for a, a next-generation pinball machine. Well, that's like that shitty show, Comic Book Men. Uh, I only watch it because I like the podcast those guys do, but one guy brought in an arcade machine. I can't remember what it was. I think it was Space Invaders. But but it had been sitting in a warehouse for like 24 years. It was in awesome condition. And uh, I think they sold it to... Like, they, they couldn't buy it because they didn't have enough money in the store. But just some guy who was there, like a customer, was like, 20 grand? Yeah, I'll take it. And that... Like, I would too. That would be awesome. And in yeah. that condition, they're so hard to find. Like, yeah. it'll be worth more in 10 years. And, and then you've got an arcade machine in your house. I mean, it's so cool. Yeah, but if you could, yeah, if you could find the... Like, to have an arcade machine or a pinball machine, like, you know, in my place, like, your place is giant, you could you could store one. Yeah, we, we, oh, but you, could, you got room, Brad. You could totally have one. Yeah, I, I could have one, right? But I wouldn't want just yeah. one, right? Well, I wonder why. I, I would just want one. I would want, like, one of these cocktail cabinets, except they're kind of sucky to play. Yeah, like, I wonder what this cost Elliot. Like, yeah, because, like, if you had a stand-up with this 
maim or whatever it is going on in here. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. But, but this is the thing about like these old school games or these tabletop things is like really like you know it's just software. It's just an em emulator. It's not a big deal. Right. But where pinball, pinball. is totally different. Yeah. 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 There's like solenoids and shit, right? Like, and like to me, getting a pinball machine in your place is a is a big fucking deal. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree um, that it's a it's a real different sort of thing, right? Uh, and yeah, like that's where the appeal. Like if you could, if I could find like little ball bearings the size of marbles, that would just make for like the most fun little mini pinball I can think yeah, of, right? Yeah. You wouldn't want ball bearings the size of like you know pellet shot. You'd want ones that were bigger than that. I, I still want the full size machine because I want to tilt it. I want to do all that shit that like. Yeah, I never tilt pinball machines. Oh, fuck so man. I love yeah. tilting them. Because, to me, that's the ultimate fuck you to the game, because it gives you a warning, like, right. you know, like, it kind of vibrates and goes, don't do that, yeah. and then if you tilt it too much, but, but when I was in art school, we had the Twilight Zone pinball machine where the tilt mechanism was broken, <laughs> so we would just fuck that machine. That like, sounds kind of more like, fun to me. <laughs> oh, it was so good. Like, you, you, you would slide it a foot or, or two on either side. Excuse me. <clears throat> so I guess that if uh, if I gave you a pinball machine you could hold in your hands, you're just going to be getting the high score. Yeah, 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 for sure. But I don't know. I don't even think I was like I don't even think I was that good at pinball. I just no, I just, just mean that you would cheat the shit out of it. Oh you, yeah, you would practically no, hold no. it horizontally or something. No, I like I had like I had unholy sex with the Twilight Zone pinball machine. Like, yeah, like even a full size with no tilt, I just yeah. pick it up. <laughs> like yeah. it, they're not that heavy. No, I, <laughs> you know? like, I was just fucking molesting that thing. <laughs> Man, yeah. I was just thinking too, looking down into this this fucking cocktail thing while it's going through its different games and showing little demo stuff. It's like a fucking portal into the past. Like, Oh my god, Ladybug, I remember this fucking game. Yeah, well, like, uh, I saw Crystal Castles go by, which is supposed to have a uh, trackball, so it'd be weird to play it on this. But they had that at that convenience store at Gibson and Union for a yep, while. Yep. Uh, Russian Attack was at the convenience store the other way, down the other way down the street. Um, oh, what else did I see? Centipede. I was watching the Centipede demo thing where it shows you how it works, and the Centipede is running into the credits, which would never happen in the game just because it's a demo. And I remember that happening at, like, a, it was like a sub shop we always stopped at on the way to Maine. And they always had Centipede. Like, oh, Mr. Deuce Castle. Uh, yeah, like, you just remember shit about your life. That you, or, do you remember, uh, who was it I was talking to about Pac-Man, where there was an eyeball version of Pac-Man where you could shoot lasers? You, oh, you that's talked here, though. about it with me, but... Yeah, it was in uh, the Brookside Mall. It's in this thing. Oh, do wow. You, do you guys remember the side-scroller version of Pac-Man? I don't called, think I ever played that. No, it was called Pac Land. Land. Yeah, I, yeah. I do remember it. I never played it uh, as a you know as a machine, but I played it emulated. Yeah. Well, we, we had it at our 7-Eleven, and I uh, thought it was the greatest advance of technology ever at that point in time. Like uh, my, f I think my favorite uh, games. There, there were three that were at like the Regent Mall. One was Galavan, which nobody has heard of or played, uh, you know, beyond me and a few other people. And it's still one of my favorite ones. It just looks so good, right? Like now, it, now, what was Galavan? Well, Galavan was a side scroller. Uh, you, you know, you were this dude who, uh, in kind of green and brown clothing, and you could beat up an armored dude, and you could gain his armor. And it was space. It was like space armor, and yeah, like. That sounds really familiar. Yeah, it's so crazy seeing this stuff. Like, I think this is why... I mean, I like old TV shows a little because of, you know, memories of the past. And uh, I really like old commercials because they remind me of being a kid. But old video games remind me of being a kid and they're not terrible. Like, you know, it's, there's a reason to go back to this shit. Yeah, it's like, I mean, Zaxxon just passed by there. And now the thing is, I never, ever played Zaxxon as a kid, but I always wanted to, right? Like, it was always... Yeah, Zaxxon and uh, Arkanoid were the two that my dad really liked on this going through here like I always remember him playing those there was um speaking of games that nobody's heard of there was one that was sort of like it was like a fighter it was like a gladiator style fighter yeah yeah and and I might have been imagining this no, as a pre-prepubescent boy 
But if you fought these certain ladies, you would beat their armor off? Yes, yes, yes. I think that one was called Gladiator, in fact. Oh, so it was called Gladiator. Yeah. But you would see tits. Possibly. There, there are many cases where you can see tits in old video games, right? There are. Rastan, um, you know... It sounds to me like maybe though that maybe that was some kind of weird hack or yeah, something. Could be, could be. Yeah. Like they always had the hacked no, no, no. Mortal Kombat games where they would say Cowabunga and oh. stuff. No, this was like, like I'm talking about pre-hacking. This was at like I saw it at uh, at my local rec-, rec center kind of thing where some kid was, you know, fighting some gladiator lady and. Popped off her breastplate and there were boobs. Nice. I, were like, I, recent, I recently played Kadash and there are harpies with lots of tits there. Okay. Yep. Oh, and a mermaid with tits. Yeah. A, so so any game of, based on a Conan. I mean, that's yeah, not yeah, yeah. a lot of games. But. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, old video games. It's it's funny. It's funny how the eight bit thing. Like when you look at like PS One. Or PS2 games, they feel dated. Well, PS1 looks like a pile of vomit. But 8-bit still looks nice. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of, yeah, up to about 16-bit. Yeah, like that stuff is just excellent. Because in a lot of ways, the abstraction is just better than realism. And when they started, you know, striving for realism, they're still not there. But there was some real awkward adolescence years going on in there. Yeah, and I, I wonder if it was maybe like... Because 16-bit was aspiring to be cartoons, right? Whereas the the PS1 and 64 era, they were aspiring to be real, and and they failed at real so horribly. Whereas they did a very basic cartoon, you know, like yeah. I think I think early 3D hardware really boned those games though because you know you know it, it, yeah it really boned those games because um, you know you like it just didn't have the polygon count to, to actually even do justice to like a cartoon or something but, right but, then, but it had enough to present like a 3d thing which is all our little lizard brains kind of wanted for, sure. for at the time all right Star Fox you're fighting triangles Right, like, see, though that's a rare occasion where once again Nintendo did outdid everyone, where they knew where to where to, where stop. to stop. Yeah, like they made it uh, on rails, and they like Star Fox is still kind of weirdly playable. Like how Mario 64 is still one of the best 3D platformers when neither game had any right to survive the yeah. test of time at all, but they yeah, do. I'm but sorry I brought up. Out. I'm actually sorry I brought up the example, but Star Fox is just the first thing that came to mind, right? But, but despite it being a good game. <laughs> on the flip side of that, if you look like if you look at Atari 2600 stuff, it's garbage. Although. I was just going to bring that up. One thing that really made me realize how much I love retro shit is I started playing the Bit Trip games that are all in that Atari style. Sure. And they're so cool. And I haven't seen that style used with a modern game ever, really. So I didn't realize that I kind of like that style. What I don't like is the Atari joystick. <laughs> well, <laughs> but I, I sort of feel like that's unfair because that's, that's a style choice understanding the limits limitations and understanding where things could have gone. Right. Whereas the Atari 2600 people thought it was the greatest. Yeah. Well, you know, and it was like there there's one in television game called like Dungeon something. It's it's horrible. And yet I was so into it. It was like a little stick man running around a maze. Uh, oh yeah. I just I got to put in my last quarter because. Hey, wait, do I have one more? I just saw Tetris. Throw me in. And I can't say no to Tetris. One of the best games ever. Let's see. Does that work? Uh, maybe you can press something to join uh, on the top. No, there are no buttons here, but you might be. Able, you have the second player start. Okay. Well, maybe we got two players. Oh yeah. There we go. You do. Yeah. Word. Tetris. I'm not sure what difficulty I just chose. I think this one, if we do stuff, it gives the other guy garbage blocks, because I have yeah. a tiny little block that yeah, I... Yeah, no, I just got one, too. 
Damn, I already fucked up. I'm trying to think back to that Tetris documentary I just watched. Like, what did they do to make this? To do these things? They played Tetris for. Fuck! Ah, uh, fuck! Hours fuck and hours. Oh, uh, Tetris. I fucking oh, you guys are battling. Oh, I am so fucked. I am so fucked. I'm doing awful. Yeah, but I always start strong in the beginning and then I, I shit the bed after. Yeah, I think I actually strive too much for Tetrises. I think that's a serious flaw in my play style. I just think you're not good enough at striving for yep. Tetrises. Yeah. See, though, I think that's where you can fall into a... Uh, shit, shit. A hole is thinking that you can be good at Tetris. So much of it is is luck. You got to roll with all of the shit. It's like Vietnam, man. Also, oh, these buttons oh. are making so many decisions. I like would not we're, make. we're so spoiled by our Game Boys and whatnot. Because these buttons are not quite as quick to respond. Oh uh, no! <laughs> Fuck! I'm not doing any better. All right. Well, while Joel is mopping the floor with me, but I beat Joel at Galaga, so we're <laughs> one to one. Yeah, I've been meaning to play some Galaga. I'm gonna beat the high score for sure. Yeah, we both just died. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, Joel. Joel won that one. Although I'm out of quarters. Okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Let's do play by play. All right. Thanks, sir. Easy. <laughs> All right, so now we got the champion Joel against new challenger Elliot. <laughs> we'll do Tetris play by play. I really, I always thought I was better at Tetris, but I think it's the pressure. It's like I'm playing against someone, I'm back in a social setting. I, I fucking choked. I did so shitty. Uh, no, no. That bad. <laughs> I, I also feel like playing on these old joysticks is part of it. Because like I kill like like Game Boy Tetris or it like back to an older time. Yeah, it really does, man. It's like it's just nostalgic kick playing all this stuff. It's awesome. And it's also like the responsiveness of these old things is just it's like a millisecond off and it throws you. There was a, a documentary about Tetris who uh, people that tournament play with the Nintendo one, and that was a thing trying to get the newest Nintendo controller they could find. It's sort of true, though. Like, I don't know, like, this, our current generation of game players, like, we have it so easy. Like, back in the day, man, you used to have to fucking work for this shit. I don't want to say we have it easy. <laughs> really? Because I feel like video games get easier and easier. Are you kidding me? They're, they're better, but Multiplayer they're easier. Multiplayer online bullshit. Like, oh, well, that's true, though, man. You go play, like, Call of Duty or something. Yeah, fair enough. Those kids are going to just destroy everything. Yeah, I don't do online. You just died? No, I just won. Uh, and furthermore, go fuck yourself. Did you clear everything, Joel? What the I fuck happened? Did. Man. Oh, it's like you hit a certain point and it, it erases everything? I get it. I'm just one. All right, going down, Mr. Tetris Man. Man, I love Tetris so much, too. Like, it's like my favorite ever puzzle game because it's so perfect. Like, how every piece is four blocks and that's every arrangement that four blocks can make. Like, it's back just... in the day when we did Jenga. Yeah. We did it by hand. Tetris by hand. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's manual Tetris. We used to go to... We used to go to the store and pick up our Jenga <laughs> uphill both ways. <laughs> we were we, falling down every time. We took a block from the middle and then we put it on the top. <laughs> you kids wouldn't understand what that's uh, like. Somebody we, yelled Jenga, you punch We took face. a block from the side that we put it on the top. <laughs> that's how you build a tower. You just don't stop. <laughs> that's how the twin terror towers fell. That was my that was my idea of what, after that happened, but I couldn't tell anybody was like. Twin Towers Jenga and I'm like oh it's such a good idea but really bad engineer. <laughs> such bad topic yeah. but man I remember after Tetris came out like every other Tetris type game they tried so many and they were never as good there was like Weltris and Hattris and Wordtris and all this fucking nonsense Jewel and columns to teach people to learn yeah Dr. Mario Look, you can learn how to spell. Do you guys no, remember, okay. uh, do you remember the Sega Game Gear? Yeah. That was like the greatest handheld video game machine ever. 
And somehow that fucking black and white Game Boy killed it. See, I don't know about that because we had everything. We, me and my brother were spoiled as shit. We had a Game Boy, a Game Gear, and an Atari Lynx. And in some ways, the Game Boy was best because you could actually play it. Like, it, it didn't run out of batteries in 40 minutes. Fair like, enough. Like, the other ones were not portable. You had to plug them in. But the Game Boy, the Game Boy didn't have a fucking TV tuner. <laughs> that's true. But that's what was so amazing. I mean, Nintendo still kind of does that. The Game Boy was, like, just some old, like... Z80 bullshit like calculator processor yeah. that costs nothing. Have you guys been talking about video games all night or have you talked about bitches yet? No, uh, they are, are, on Vinyl Content we were talking about bitches, but I started a video game podcast, so I was like, we should record a video game podcast while we're playing video games. Like, that is like so meta. So is, that, that's where we're next level geek, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. That's the thing, too. That's how I know I'm like a super loser. I'm like, I gotta come to the bar more. There's video games here. <laughs> like, old video games. <laughs> Craig can hit on chicks and get laid and I'll just be like I'm playing video games uh, Keith you can get laid too I'll get you laid <laughs> I just need to find the right lady who's impressed by all my high scores I'll be like I'm ASS you know I, you know what I I think that is uh, <laughs> if you could get McNally laid uh, I think that's a pretty quality challenge for you because <laughs> yeah. this man is picky oh, I, want a bar. I gotta be able to get a guy laid <laughs> get anyone laid I don't know. I don't know. This this might be beyond your skills. Because I was like getting laid too much. <laughs> ah, fuck me. <laughs> Not you, Miguel. <laughs> I'll never find it's love. Not that easy to get that laid. <laughs> I do have discerning taste. <laughs> this shit's getting intense. Oh no! Oh no! It's going far. You can always feel it, right? When it's just you know it's going wrong. <laughs> Just like yourself up with some Russian folk yeah. music. Yeah, man. So did I win? Is that what that meant? Oh uh, yeah, double double I champion. Fucking a. Man, yeah, Tetris. Tetris is so genius. The uh, the documentary about Tetris is called The Ecstasy of Order, because you just Sorry. want them all to be in the right spot. No, it's part of the reason why I graphic design for a living is I'm good at this shit. Yep. Swallow my quarter? Just fucking swallow my quarter. <laughs> I love that. The machine sure. in Elliot's bar is like, you stole my quarter, this piece of shit. This is my fucking machine, damn it. That is so classic, though. As a little kid, it's like oh. so heartbreaking when you lose your fucking quarter. Like, it's the worst. I could have had wine gums or this. And I chose this. <laughs> and I got nothing. Look, it was... It was either cable for the bar or the love tester, and I stand by my choice. You know what? I I can remember there was. Do you remember Dungeons and Dragon candy? Fuck, I was hooked on that shit. It was just the same fucking dumbass candy as everything else. It was like that that bad sort of like powdery bullshit. Um, yeah, we don't fall for any of that stuff anymore. No, ever. <laughs> No. We're just starting to get our candy. That's right. I don't buy bottle caps every time I see them. <laughs> but the the cool thing about Dungeons and Dragons candy, right. uh, aside from the little box, is it came with like a stats card. So you would collect the boxes, and if you're really clever, you can make a game out of it. So you could end up. And we didn't really realize that we were just playing Dungeons and Dragons. We thought we were playing a brand new game with all these leftover cards. That's how they trick you into exactly. worshipping Satan? Exactly. Man, though, I remember there were these uh, trading cards you could get that were based on Nintendo games. And, like, there'd be a Double Dragon one with scratch-off shit. And you had to uh, scratch off. If you scratched off, like, two punches, then you won the round, but if you oh. scratched off like that you got punched, I mean, it was dumb, but I used to love it. I remember this. Yeah. Anything about video games, like I was in, I was such a sucker. Oh, me too. For sure. Those Nintendo scratch-off cards? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah they weren't they, I mean, I was going to say, weren't they awesome? But they totally, unequivocally, were not awesome, but I still have great memories of them. Well, know? like, they seemed awesome. They definitely seemed awesome at the time, which might be, like, the whole rallying cry of everything, <laughs> right? right? But yeah, the Double Dragon one especially I, I enjoyed just because I loved Double Dragon with all of my heart. Just, and despite the feature film. Uh, it was way before the feature film, right? Man, this round of Tetris is getting intense. They started with a bunch of garbage blocks just to fuck you. 
shit's crazy. Anyway, I feel like I should wrap this up now. <laughs> that's a, that's yeah, that's a podcast. That'll be uh, the sign-off phrase, Super Tetris. So Joel is Super Tetris Grand Champion Master, but I won at Galaga, so. <laughs> so still, though, two to three, right? You won, though, right? Yeah. Two to three, Joel wins. Damn it. All right, I'm going to get a drink. <laughs>